love this podcast? Head to patreon.com slash DATC Media Company to find out how you can show your support. DATC Media is very excited to be a Nugs.net official affiliate. Never miss the show. Nugs.net allows you to stream live concert audio and video in their app anytime, anywhere. Listen to last night's show with premium sound quality and official soundboard recordings. Watch a stacked archive of past live performances from countless artists and access future subscriber-exclusive live streams. Easily keep track of your tour highlights with shareable playlists and more. Take a scroll through and you'll quickly see why Nugs.net is my favorite app. Link in show notes to start your seven-day free trial. Nugs.net, where live music lives. A member of the DATC Media Family. This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphreys McGee. Each episode will feature a rotating schedule of insightful show recaps, interviews with members of Team UM, as well as musicians who have been inspired by the band. This is your place for the latest news and happenings in the world of Humphreys McGee, keeping you informed on what's going on or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah J. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week of Dropped Among This Crowd. I'm your host, Sarah J. I hope you were able to check out last week's episode where I chatted about the recent New Year's run, December 29th through 31st at the Riviera Theater in Chicago. Check that out if you haven't. Nice little breakdown of all the music as well as my own personal recap and experience of the weekend as well. I wanted to pop into your feed this week and bring you some news. And I'm still working on my look back of the East Coast leg of Winter Tour 2024. And I thought about it. Why not on the weeks when I am maybe working on something for a little longer like this, or there's other projects in the media company that are needing more of my attention right now, or traveling, being on tour, mom life, just life in general, (laughs) I can still pop into your feed, say hey, bring you some news, and bring a conversation to you that maybe you've never heard before. Maybe you're newer to the show and you've never scrolled back through all of the episodes or maybe one you haven't heard in a while. But I was just thinking about all of the content and all of the episodes here on the podcast. Been almost six years that I've been doing the show and doing episodes. That's a lot of content, a lot of conversations, especially during the pandemic in 2020. There was a lot of conversations because people were home. So it's been cool to scroll back through and see everything, and I'm really excited to bring some conversations to you guys. So this week, I am going to bring you one of my favorite episodes ever here on the show from last fall. Sorry to anybody listening who's been a guest here on the show, including the members of Umphreys. Sorry, guys, but this is my favorite episode of the show. My conversation with Lotus drummer Mike Greenfields. Mike and I chatted while he was on his layover after playing four shows with Umphreys while Chris was out. I said three in 
our conversation when I listened back to it. And it was actually for September 14th through 16th. Seriously, listen to those shows if you haven't. I start our chat with just gushing, just gushing over how amazing he did. There is also video from the September 16th and 17th shows at the Elm in Bosman, Montana on Nugs. Watch for free if you're a subscriber. For sure worth your time. And I will say it a million times. If you're not a Nug subscriber, what are you doing? There is so much content on there. And I'm not even talking about Umfree shows. And then they were releasing old shows last year, video and audio. And then the free live streams. Just the stuff they have for Umfrees is barely scratching the surface of what Nugs offers. Like, it's ridiculous, the stuff that they have on there. So... If you are not a Nug subscriber and you are a music fan, which you obviously are if you're listening to this podcast, it's worth the $15, I think it is, a month. Seriously, it's definitely worth it. So if you're not, link in the show notes where you can uh, sign up and get a seven-day free trial. But anyway, those shows that uh, Mike was at, two of the four shows, you can watch those on Nugs. And Mike also recently jumped up to join Andy on percussion this past weekend in Philly at the Brooklyn Bowl to jam on All in Time. And what a jam that was. Check that out if you haven't. And there's also video of that on Nugs, February 17th. So anyway, Mike was legit in the airport after he did these shows chatting with me, which was just so awesome and kind of him to do to take that time on his layover. And we only talked for 30 minutes, but we covered so much. It was just an absolutely amazing conversation. And it was very cool too to feed off the energy of him just playing a show last night just being in these four night mini tour with Umphreys and now he's talking about it so all of that energy and excitement is just oozing out of him as he's talking about it I mean his energy is incredible anyways I don't know if you're following him on social media. I know he's on Instagram, TikTok, I believe, too, if that's your thing. His motivational quotes of the day that he was doing on tour with Lotus, they're just so awesome and inspirational. And just, again, his energy and his smile. And I don't know about you, but I need that in my social media feed. <laughs> that is the the energy and the vibe that I want when I'm, scroll- when I'm scrolling social media. There is just so much other shit going on in the world. And I'm not saying that we need to be ignorant and ignore the news or what is going on by no means. You know, we absolutely need to be educated about what's going on in the world. However, we don't need to constantly be dwelling and consuming all of that. And so content like what Mike brings to the internet is just so great. So if you are not following him on Instagram, I highly, highly suggest you do. I'll link his stuff in the show notes. But Seriously, his vibe, his energy is just so amazing and infectious. And again, you're going to feel it the minute we we start talking. So this was just so, so, so much fun. Again, I'm just grateful that Mike took the time to have this awesome conversation with me. So thanks again to him. And I'm super excited to sit down and chat with him again about other stuff. Anyway, before we get to that, let's run down some recent news. As I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm working on breaking down 
this first Eastern portion of winter tour. I'm still deciding how I'd like to do that. I've mentioned in past episodes here that I'm bringing some freshness to the show and the media company. I've done that with the logos and the show cover picture. And so I want to bring a freshness to the way that I am reviewing the shows. And so I've tossed around a couple of different ideas. And so I'm still deciding on what I'd like to do with that. But I would love to know what your favorite show and your favorite jam was from this beginning part of 2024. The first 21 shows of the year. So in the show notes, there is a link for a Google form. You can just click that and fill that out. And I'm very excited to see what everyone has to say. There's a show or two I do have to go back and listen to, but I've listened to everything else or watched it because they did have stream of the other shows earlier in the year. So there's all sorts of of content for you to consume to check out the first 21 shows of the year if you haven't yet. But please let me know what your thoughts are for show, favorite show, and what your favorite jam or jams were. I'm going to make it so that you're able to kind of put a longer response for jam because there's definitely going to be more than one, I feel, when asking for favorite jam out of 21 shows. You're definitely going to have more than one. Also, I'm still working on the Q&A episode. So many great questions. Keep coming with them, please. They are so good. Some of them are really funny. I can't wait to answer some of these. Oh, I can't wait to answer all of them, but some of them are really funny, and I can't wait to answer some of them specifically. It's going to be a really fun episode to put together and bring to you guys. So get your questions in. If you have something you want to ask me, there is a link in the show notes where you can submit yours. Um, But yeah, please keep them coming. It's been so much fun to read through those. Heads up, the next edition of Crooked Conversations, the quarterly magazine from DATC Media, is in the editing stages now. Those will be going to print in the next couple weeks. So if you're wanting to make sure you don't miss this edition, which will feature New Year's coverage, the recent pictures that Matthew Wright did at 930 Club Valentine's Day, um, Freak Spotlight, the Much Obliged with Keith Greiner, who was also recently on their podcast, set list from this first half of the year, And the back half of 2023, there's a word search. Oh my goodness, all sorts of coverage. 40 full color pages, all Umphreys content. If you are wanting to make sure that you get one of those, head to patreon.com slash DATC Media Company. Make sure you're signed up by March 15th if you want to be included in the print magazine order. I do not order excessive inventory of those, so if you want one, make sure you sign up. I did recently post a reel on Instagram that showed the issue, this past issue with Joel on the cover, and that kind of gives you a peek inside what it looks like. I will also do other pictures and video and maybe showing what it looks like and if you're interested like reach out to me feel free to send me a dm on social media I'm all over I'm very easy to find feel free to reach out if you're seriously interested but you're curious about maybe the patreon packages or what the magazine even looks like feel free to reach out and I will be more than happy to answer any questions because I know sometimes when you're buying stuff online, especially with a magazine or if you're signing up for a monthly subscription of something, it can be a little confusing. So by all means, feel free to reach out to me and I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have with 
the Patreon, what kind of access you get. I had someone reach out to me and they were like, hey, you know, this is what is within my budget to support DATC. But I would also like to make sure that I'm getting, you know, the calendar at the end of the year. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is the tier that you want to make sure you're subscribing to because then you're going to get the, these packages and the calendar and the magazine and whatever else you're wanting. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be very happy to help you. And speaking of membership packages, I'm starting to think about what I want to put in for this year. I'm very excited. The kids and I have some really great ideas. So patreon.com slash DATC Media Company. There is a bunch of stuff there. Make sure you sign up by March 15th if you want to make sure you get a print version of Crooked Conversations. If digital is more your jam, I know people love it on their iPads or whatever, Crooked Conversations also comes in a digital format and it's all interactive when there are links or there's a graphic for the show or something like that, a tour graphic. You click on it and it'll take you to the ticketing page to buy tickets or the link will take you to the playlist or whatever. It's all interactive and it's a lot of fun. So if that's more your jam, there is a tier option for that as well. And a very cool perk, if you sign up to do the digital version, you will instantly get access to all past issues in the digital format to go and consume all this content. So I think it's very, very cool. Patreon.com slash DATC Media Company or link in the show notes. All right, so some quick Umphreys news. The Vinyl Hall of Fame 2022 official statement from the band's website reads, Continuing last year's debut, this class features two limited edition double LP offerings, the N2F and 2F editions. Both versions are splatter, and each version will have a color variance unique to that edition. The N2F version will be a single pressing of a 1,000 copies, while the 2F version will consist of only 250 units. Tied to the 2F is a limited edition digital twin that will permanently live on chain. Each record contains an NFC chip that links to a series of unique images corresponding to your specific version. It verifies proof of authenticity and certifies ownership for each individual album. Both versions will come with a download of the full digital release on February 23rd, clocking in at just under five hours. Pre-order by Friday, March 7th, and be entered to win a drawing for test pressings of this year's release. 2F purchasers will be entered into the drawing twice. Of course, link in show notes to pre-order that. And if you're interested in checking out my episode about Hall of Fame 2022, episode 241, and I will also link that in the show notes. Some tour dates, one that was noticed on the website but not actually announced yet. June 21st at Big Top Chautauqua near Bayfield, Wisconsin. A quick Google search came up that it's a 900 capacity outdoor venue. And seeing this pop up on the site makes me believe that summer tour dates will be coming soon. I don't have any information on when those will be dropping, but seeing that other bands are announcing dates also makes me hopeful. Mo just announced that they're doing a date here in July with Daniel Donato, so I would not be at all surprised to see Umphreys also announce a date in the same location down by the water here in Buffalo. Some other show dates for you. After Umphreys next month in Portland, March 16th at the Good Foot, Sarah J presents Willie Waldman Project featuring Jake Sinegar, Norwood Fisher from Fishbone on bass, Tony Austin from Kamazi Washington on drums, and more. Doors are at 9, and if you're not going to be at Umphreys, 
come on over to the Good Foot because there will be a book signing to kick off the evening for Dead Tour Head, a hilarious yet gritty look back at the 80s Grateful Dead tour written by Portland resident and skateboard legend Nordy and Willie Waldman. Yeah, I have not had a chance to read this book yet, but you know I'm gonna. <laughs> you know I'm gonna. But some of the stories that Willie has shared with me that are inside the book are just hilarious and gritty are the best ways to describe that. I know how Tor is and can be in the 2020s. I can only imagine how Tor was in the 1980s when you did not have any of the technological anything that we have now. So I cannot wait to read this book. I'm also looking forward to meeting Nordy. I heard he is a very interesting guy. And so yeah, if you are going to be in Portland and if you're not going to be at Umphrey's, Come on over to the Good Foot and check out the book signing. And then local band Lost Ox starts at 10 and will play about 90 minutes before handing it over to Willie and company. And then Jake's going to come and jam after Umphreys. It's going to be an awesome evening. And if you haven't had a chance to check out Willie Waldman Project, you need to with or without Jake. This guy is a fucking legend. It is insane the people that he has played with, plays with, knows, puts together to play with. I mean, it's incredible. He has such a talent and a gift to bring together the perfect blend of musicians to play music. This show with Jake in Portland is the third show that I've worked hand in hand with Willie to put together. We're working on some other shows without Jake. I'm helping him with as well. And each time it's incredible how he just knows exactly who he wants to play with, who would be a great fit. It's it's amazing to witness and then to see it come to life and to see everybody come together and, and play together. And it's just amazing. So definitely, definitely come and check that out if you were in Portland. Tickets are now available for that. Of course, link in show notes. I'll also link the book in the show notes so you can check that out. And I will also link video from the Mishawaka show back in October uh, Willie, Jake, Kofi Baker, Colin Scott, Jeff Harrell. And then in December, after night one of Umphreys, we did an after party, Willie, Jake, and company. And that was also amazing. So I will link the YouTube video for that too. And you can check those out. Just such a great time. I'm excited for this. And also, if you are in Portland the day before for Umphreys because they are playing March 15th and 16th. After night one, Willie Waldman Project featuring Norwood Fisher, Tony Austin, Cameron Morgan on guitar, and others at Azoth Space. Doors are at eight, music starts at nine, and goes until everyone is done playing their sets. So definitely come on over after the Umphrey show. Check that out. People are always posting and asking, where's the after party? What's going on after the show? I always getting text messages. People are asking me where the after party is. Well, that's where the after party is after the first night of Umphrey's in Portland. So Tickets are also on sale for that, and I will link that in the show notes. You can find information for all of that as well. And if you have any questions about either one of those shows, again, feel free to reach out, and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. All right, well, I think that's everything. Make sure you take a scroll through the show notes and check out all of the links. Here is my conversation with Lotus drummer Mike Greenfield. 
I will see you around these parts next week. Mad love. In a very cool new addition to the Much Obliged podcast, The Yellow Balloon Experience, we now have merch. So check out www.yujam.com and click on the Community Impact tab. We've got a Much Obliged shirt and a Much Obliged podcast, The Yellow Balloon Experience shirt. If you get the plain Much Obliged shirt, the money from that goes to the table, and that helps us buy more stickers and candy for shows. If you buy the podcast shirt, that helps us run this podcast. Can't wait to see you at a show in one of these shirts. So, dude, first of all, thank you. This is cool. Sure. I'm super stoked to be talking with you already. So, thank you. Um, of course. You fucking killed it. Okay, let's start with this. <laughs> <laughs> you slayed it. I, I have been listening to Umphreys for 17 years. And doing wow. this podcast and everything, I listen to every show very intently. And I have never listened to shows like that I wasn't at. I listened to all three nights, like bam, 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 bam. I've come back to moments of this weekend that, I mean, we'll get into all of that for sure. But (laughs) kudos just for you and your playing is just I'm blown away um kudos for coming in and and stepping in and doing this um and kudos for pushing the guys I felt to jam a little harder and you know do these other things I feel like you kind of pushed them over these last four nights and that was really cool to listen to yeah, no, it was really fun too. And I, when they first asked me about it, I was, <laughs> I almost said no, just because I'm such a different drummer than Chris and everything. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, can I do this? And like, I, I've been listening to them for, for decades, literally. Um, but I never that closely. I, I couldn't name one song. Um, okay. But, you know, we were always at festivals together and everything. And like, you know, for some reason, I guess every time I stuck my head in, to watch them a little bit it was a song like bridgeless where it was just like super crazy and i'm like wow i'm really not that type of drummer um <laughs> sure. but then they threw me a lot of songs and i'm like oh wow okay there this band has a lot of different sides to it um and then i realized that uh that i think i have something that i could bring to the table and uh you know take uh my approach on it and uh yeah it was a blast like honestly it was uh, probably one of like top five musical highlights of my life, which may be saying a lot. I love um, that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was just it was just really cool, and and just getting to know the guys on a deeper level, and and meeting their crew. They have a wonderful crew. Um, yeah, the, it, the last four days couldn't have been any better. You know, I mean, it was a struggle. <laughs> you know, it was, there's a lot of songs. I was reading charts the whole time, playing on a drum set that wasn't mine. You know, so yeah. it was just like the whole time I was just on edge, but. Uh, you know, I had some hiccups, but I didn't have any train wrecks, and that's all I was uh, hoping for. So, <laughs> hey, sounded great from where I was sitting in my living room with the headphones on. And you know what? Reading people's comments and hearing what everybody has had to say that was there, you you just absolutely knocked it out of the park. So, oh, and, thank and you, thank you. The, the fact that, like, Draconian, for example, which is one of my favorite songs, and anybody that's listening to this they're going to be like, oh, yeah, Sarah and Draconian, you know, that's, that's what you're saying <laughs> with me, okay? Um, this is my favorite version. This, wow, this wow. is my well, favorite you. version. Okay, like, I instantly messaged people and was like, I thought I loved this song before. This is amazing. It, yeah. It, what, Bayless said you had just heard it the day before. Yeah, th- so that one, <laughs> yeah, so originally, because they asked me about a month ago, and they, they gave me... 28 originals and I think eight covers to learn. And then then the day before I flew out 
friend is like, you know, I think we want to have you play almost the entire show. So, and he's like, you know, he was cool about it. He's like, no pressure at all, you know, but here's 10 more originals. Here's, you know, <laughs> 10 more covers. So I'm like, all right, I got it. So I was just charting them out on the plane. I had a five hour plane ride. So I'm just like, you know, writing furiously next to my neighbor, the guy sitting next to me was just like, kept looking at me like I was a crazy person, just like scrawling like a madman for five hours. You know, so I knocked them all out. But yeah, I think that's that was the first time I even played that song, you know, besides just listening to it and taking notes. And it's a cool song. It's like dark and evil. And then it has like a little light one of to my, it too. But yeah. And the lyrics. And it's it's one of my favorite songs. Um probably just ever. Like honestly, the the structure of the song and the complexity of it and the journey that the song goes on. Before you even get to the lyrics, I mean, I've gone on lengthy conversations wow. about that song and the complexity of it and the, just the multitude of ways that it's jammed and whatever. And I listened to it again this morning on the way to the doctor's <laughs> office. Like, it's just, it's so good. I, and uh, I'm just, thank you. Yeah. Just thoroughly impressed by by everything. And and of course, I don't want to dismiss any of the drummers that have, you know, sat no, in and done all they great. all slayed it. You know, I was on tour with when Dwayne was was sitting in and oh, right, right. Um, I saw one of the shows that Ben played in Asheville and everybody has just been incredible. And it's been really cool to listen to this music I'm so familiar with and hear all these different drummers and what their yeah. style and what their voice and their taste brings to these songs that we're yeah, all yeah. heard 200 times at this point. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. It just it brings a different angle on it. And, you know, I also want to say how proud I am also of all those drummers. I, I'm friends with most of them that they use, you know, some of them really good friends. And to hear them just come in and, and take on this this difficult material and just slay it. It's been awesome. I was joking with someone and saying that we should, all the drummers, we have to get together and have a little support group, you know, and just like, you know, we survived Humphrey's tour 2023 and <laughs> just console each other. Maybe I love it. Crying. I love it. Well, <laughs> no, it's going to be great because my, my goal is to talk to all of you. So you're actually the oh, yeah. first one that I've had a chance to chat with. So that's cool anyway. Oh, nice, nice. To get you right off of off of the shows is yeah really it couldn't cool. be any more fresh than this yeah just a few For hours sure. after the show right <laughs> so it, it's gonna be interesting to hear everybody's like perspective and you know different take of it i'm sure that uh, the underlying experience is going to be the same about how awesome and and amazing everybody is because that's just the truth of it <laughs> yeah, it's yeah it'd be really cool to hear everybody's story and i'm also very excited to get to know you better Oh, yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> I, I'm familiar with Lotus, but I don't see a lot of Lotus. And so right. I don't know a lot about you. So I'm really excited to not only get to know you guys better, but to be exposed to other drummers that I don't see or hear very often. And that's a very cool treat as well, you know, to, to have sure. that. So why don't you kind of give me a little history of yourself like where did your passion for drumming start and and where are you from and that kind of stuff yeah so um i grew up in long island in new york and uh started playing drums when i was really young but started to get more serious when i was about nine and uh you know went through the typical channels that people do you know i went through a led zeppelin phase and a police phase um and then uh I moved to Philadelphia in 1998 and I met up with a band called the ally there. And um, that was my big introduction to the jam scene. I really wasn't that familiar with it uh, too much before. Um, and from there I became friends with the disco biscuits because they were also based out of Philly. Um, and then, you know, just through touring, just kind of started meeting everybody on the scene, including Lotus. Um, and uh, I stayed friends with Lotus when, when their original drummer left, um, 14 years ago, uh, they asked me to come and sub for him. It was only supposed to be a temporary thing. And then two years went by. I'm like, wait, am I, am I the drummer in this band? With am I like now? here <laughs> now? Is this what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> yeah. Cause they kept on, they kept on saying, yeah, just one more tour, one more tour. And I'm like, guys, what, what's happening? It's like uh, in a relationship and you're like, are we dating? Is that, <laughs> yeah, is yeah. that what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've been with them for 14 years now, you know, and it's, cool. it's been an awesome experience and, you know, 
done a lot of incredible things, checked a lot of bucket list items, you know, played Red Rocks. I think we're up to 15 times now, you know, and uh, along the way, just met a lot of great musician friends, including all the guys from Humphreys. Um, and it's funny, actually, I, I was curious why they asked me to do it, you know, because there's so many drummers and I'm not a prog metal drummer at all. So I'm like, you know, I was a little curious and I was talking with Brendan and, and when we were on holidays, we did this little gig called Omega Moves, which is one of their side projects where they play 80 songs. Yeah. And um, and he said, I picked you, I said, and I wanted to get you just because of that. I'm like, but that's like the most basic 80s songs you could ever imagine. I was, you could even tell how I could play from that. He said, yeah, but you were prepared. <laughs> and he said, because you were so prepared, I knew you'd be able to handle these gigs. Um, so I'm like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. And that's a lesson there just about being prepared and ready for the gig and everything. For um, sure. So who actually called you then? Was it Brendan? Is that who like called you or texted you or? Um, no, well, Joel reached out first in a text message. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he was asking me if I could do it, you know, and I talked to my wife also just cause it's, um, it's a Jewish holidays over the weekend and she has family coming down. I'm like, do you mind if I do some shows? And she was cool about it. And, you know, and also she knew that she'd have to, you know, we have little kids and she, she, you know, would have to watch them a decent amount while I was preparing for all this, you know, so a lot of, uh, thanks go to her. Yeah, um, sure. so, and, and then Brendan reached out and between the two of them, we were going back and forth. I talked a little bit with their manager. Um, and he had a text. He's like, "Are you sure you're prepared to do this? Are you ready for this challenge?" And I'm like, "I'm ready. Let's do it." Um, so yeah, you know, so so they reached out for us, and we started pick, you know picking songs. They gave me a list of 700 covers to choose from, you know, that they've done over the years. I'm like, let's narrow this down a little bit, and uh, you know, that's overwhelming. Like even yeah, you saying yeah. that, like that's overwhelming. <laughs> I'm not kidding with that number too. You know, band for 25 years, they they amassed quite a catalog there. Yeah, because um, there are some covers they've only ever, you know, played once or, you know, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of songs. <laughs> there's a lot of songs, you know. So yeah. I, I picked ones that, that I liked and ones that I thought that weren't too difficult because some of their songs are crazy. I picked one uh, difficult song called Bridgeless um, just because I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, see if I could do it. Um, and uh, so that one was really fun. But, you know, so if, if we do it again, I'd like to to pick you know like 1348 and some of some of the ones that are that are uh, a little more technically challenging also but you know just the sheer volume of songs that i had to get familiar with it didn't really lend itself to doing that so yeah is, is there a song well because you said you, you weren't like super familiar with their catalog but there was there a song on the list that you looked at it and you were like oh hell no <laughs> um with 1348 i started charting it and then it got to the end part and it's like an odd time signature and chris is just like blowing all over it and i'm like you know i, I just i just can't handle this one yeah. right now along with everything else but i i, I am going to come back to that and it's funny i was even texting ben about it a little bit um because he ben took that song and he did a great job with it because i yeah. when i asked the guys they they play the song so much they don't even know what time signature it's in they just feel it you yeah, know they, so they couldn't even help it, it. So, yeah. yeah yeah so 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 but ben ben spent some time dissecting it so we, you know we, we were talking about it so uh yeah so so that one but you know a lot of songs like really surprising about how catchy they are um like loose ends was one of the new ones that i just learned and it's such a beautiful song you know it's so mm -hmm. powerful um uh, so that 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 was really cool and just like a lot of the, the songs i was just singing you know at the top of my lungs throughout the house as i'm learning them yeah and uh, we we had a lotus festival out in ohio and i took my whole family and i made them listen to umphreys mcgee for for seven hours on, on the way there and my wife refused she's like i'm driving home you have headphones you know no more <laughs> so uh, <laughs> She's like but, this. Uh, there, there's a line for my support, and yeah. there. So you the head <laughs> she <reached> Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I've pretty much, I've, I've put in enough. I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to your wife. <laughs> Shout out to the wife. Yeah, and I got my kids uh, some unfreeze T-shirts. They have some kid sizes, you know. So, so they they get some uh, some swag for listening to them for all these hours too. But they I like them. them. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. So <laughs> That's so great. I now they just, just want me to play for Taylor Swift, you know, so they can uh, really enjoy the backstage experience. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have an almost 13 year old daughter, so I'm surprised she didn't like bust through the, the wall. 
because she like felt the word Taylor Swift then. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay, girl, it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, let me sell my arm. We'll get you tickets. It'll be great. Yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that you were playing Chris's kit. Yeah, and I know yeah. that like Dwayne and we didn't really get a chance to get into it, but Dwayne was using his own kit. And then I noticed like oh, wow. as the time had progressed, like the guys were using Chris's kit. So was everything Chris's or did you have some components of your things mixed in there? Yeah. The only thing I brought were uh, my bass drum pedal um, just because it's he uses a different type than mine, you know, so, and that one's pretty personal. But every everything else was that he has is, is is pretty standard and plus just I'm, because i'm flying in you know i'm really limited to what i bring but if, if i were to come back again i think i'd bring a little bit more um but most most of his set is, is pretty cool and he has these little hi hats that i like a lot but i think i may buy for myself now nice. so uh but yeah yeah but it's a pretty cool kit you know and um it, there there he has a tech named coach um, who's just awesome and he tuned them really well so it was nice playing that kit. But, you know, it's it's still like something else. It's just an, another thing that's unfamiliar. You know, like my kit, I could play with my eyes closed and I know where everything is. And, right. you know, it's it's not the same here. But, you know, it's it's, it's just standard. It's um, like being so, in a different kitchen. You kind of know where the sink, like, you know where the sink is. Exactly. The stove, but yeah. like, and maybe the fridge is in a different spot or something, you know, it's kind of. No, that's of, a really good analogy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have the idea of the, the make out, you get it, but you know, there's some things that are going to be different. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what was like your biggest surprise of this whole experience? <clears throat> wow. Um. I knew it would be like this, but just like the hang with the guys was really awesome. Um, you know, just getting to know them and we're brothers and we're, we're, we're going through this thing, you know, and we're trying to support Chris, you know, so that the camaraderie of that and, and of, of the crew, that was, that was, and again, not surprising, but it was just something that I'm like, wow, that was, you know, it was just an awesome hang. And it was just really good getting to know them better. Um, all the other times I've met them, it was at a festival and we'll hang out for like five, 10 minutes and, and shoot the shit. And then, you know, we go on our own ways. So now to, to like basically live with them 24 seven for four days, you know, to really get to know them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was really yeah. cool. And like, honestly, I hardly ever spoke before to, to, to Jake or Andy. Um, so getting to know them as well was, was, was great. So for sure. Um, for sure. Yeah. And just, and I, and I think just how well we gelled on stage, um, I, I, I thought it was, it was really uh, like a really glove. Incredible. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like a glove. You yeah. fit in there so, so well. I just, <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to like not gush about it because I did so much of it at the beginning of it, but I just so thoroughly just impressed and blown away. And for yeah, me, no. how people like listen to this now, they're like, okay, okay, <laughs> we will. <laughs> like, no, it was cool. And do you know what it is too? They're such master musicians. Like, I took some chances in some of the improv and no matter what I threw at them, they were just with me on B2, you know? And see, that's um, exactly what I meant when I said that I felt like listening to that, I felt like you were, you were laying, not only were you laying things on the table, which, you know, any drummer kind of sitting in would be like, oh, hey, let's kind of see what happens here. But I feel like the things you were laying on the table were like a little more like, let's let's see what happened you know like, yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. you you had some balls you laid it out there <laughs> and you were like all right guys how about this and they were like all right and it worked and it was awesome yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah even one song i remember i don't even, well i take it back i don't remember which song it was but there was a improv section and i and, and they were going to end in like a, like a kind of fizzle sort of thing and come with the next song and so i just instead of doing that i'm just like i'm just gonna speed this song up really fast and just get intense and go and we didn't talk about that um and i just went for it and they just went with me and it is very tricky you know with lotus i know how much i can lead a jam and you know we're all very comfortable with each other but when i'm playing with other musicians especially guys that have been in a band with each other for 25 years and then come in and, and just like you know, to say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to leave this for a little bit and, and we're going to see what happens. It's 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 tricky. You know, it's a fine line. Um, but when I did do that, they were really responsive to it and just went right with it. So that that was really cool. For me. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I bet it was just and, it, and again, it just it translated so well listening. And anybody that was there was just like, wow, 
just just blown away. So I yeah, can't yeah. enough. Kudos, kudos, kudos. <laughs> so this is kind of like a two parter. So after this experience, and maybe this is something I'm sure in hindsight, maybe your answer will change. But this experience, how do you think that this is going to spill over musically? I mean, you kind of already mentioned with some equipment that Chris had that you're like, oh, maybe I'll add this to my own mix. So musically, yeah. what do you think you're going to take not only personally, but maybe bring over to Lotus perhaps, but also like personally after spending this time, you said you never were able to spend this time with these guys. In this mm. way. So kind of personally also, what are you taking away from this experience? How do you think it's going to shape moving forward for you? Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to change too much with my, the way I play with Lotus, just because that's been so cemented over the years, you know, it, it, maybe some things, it was really cool for me to dig into Chris's playing so much over the last, uh, month, uh, he's, he's, he's so incredible and, and, and listening to, to his, his chops and, and just like, he hears everything. Is every note that's playing and that's really cool and i've never you know especially i've been so busy the last few years i have little kids too and you know so i haven't been practicing probably as much as i should and and after listening to him you know i i think i need to up, up my game a little bit <laughs> um you know so i, I was cut yeah i was kind of um you know thinking that a little bit um but what i really like is to you, you know I, who knows how long Chris is going to be out, but if they ask me to come back again and if I can have these songs under my belt even more um, where, where I'm not, you know, I'd love to come back and not use charts when I play and just be like right there in a the moment. When you're using charts, you're a little, like you're one step removed just because, you know, I'm looking over here and everything else is happening and I'm trying to, you know, it's just not second nature. So um, I think moving forward, that's something that I'd really like to, to experience with that. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> no, I love, trust me, I am the queen of tangents. So you never apologize for tangents on, <laughs> if you're on my show. No, I'm like the queen of them for sure. You know, with Chris and his style of playing and what he brings to the Umphrey sound, how, when you were listening to it and preparing to play these songs, how did you still like honor Chris's sound and give you the Umphrey sound and kind of what that is? at the same time still being you yeah um at first you know that, that it was very intimidating for me just because i can't do what he does and you know so uh, it, i tried a little bit like i got a double bass from pedal that i started messing around with and i haven't played the double bass since i was in high school um so i'm like okay you know because they need a little bit of the heavier element so i, I brought that in um but after I was listening a lot, I'm like, you know, there's just no way I can do what he does. So, you know, every every musician has strengths and, and weaknesses. Um, so I'm like, I just have to bring my strengths to it. And and that's more like, I, you know, I have the capacity to play the forms of all, of all the songs and everything, you know. So I feel like my strengths would be more, uh, you know, I, I really know how to support songwriters a lot. I feel like that's, that's something that I've owned a lot over the years and how to make a song sound really good. I know how to make people dance. You know, I, I understand improv really well, how to be patient. Um, you know, so I, knowing that I can't do what he does, I just figure I have to use my strengths and bring that in. And uh, hopefully it's enough to get by <laughs> these songs, you know? So, so that's, that's kind of, that was like my mental <laughs> model going through it. You know, it's interesting you use those words. You used patient and you, you, you know, you know how to get people to dance. And it's really interesting is that's a lot of what I got from these shows. They were very funky. They were very dancey. And any of like the covers, they it, it, perfect word to describe them is they were played more patiently. And so everything right, that yeah. you said is exactly <laughs> how I would have described these shows listening to them so yeah oh that's interesting like, yeah, yeah yeah spot on <laughs> <laughs> spot on yeah you know and it just comes from playing so much you know it and it's funny even me listening back to a lotus show from five years ago like i can't even listen to it anymore because i used to play so much different you know i was like a lot on top of the beat i was like always pushing the tempo a little bit 
And every time I listen to myself play, I think I'm playing too much. It's, it's, it's funny. I was talking to Ryan about this. You know, when I'm in the moment and I'm playing, I just feel like, I'm like, I have to do more. I have to add more. I have to do more. And when I listen back to the shows, I'm like, oh my God, I have to do less. You know, so you, like, even in the moment, I have to always remind myself, like, play less, play, let, you know, let there be space, especially, especially in bands when there's percussionists. Um, I totally change the way I play when we have percussionists because it's their job to fill in all of the empty spaces, not mine. I'm just laying down. You know, we had actually had this um, little drum feature and I, I didn't even solo during it. I just kept time. I know that Andy go and then, uh, and then, and then Jake came up also and he was playing, you know, so I like, and we were just supporting and I was just trying to make it one big happening instead of just like blowing chops, you know? So it's just, uh, yeah, those are just things that I've owned over decades here of playing. Yeah. 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 It's just fun to bring that to, to this, uh, to these guys. Yeah, for sure. And you could tell that they were all having a great time just from like listening. And again, I mean, me just having my own friendships with these guys and being on tour with them and, and kind of the same capacity you have been. And I can tell when they're having an extra good time and you can tell that everybody was having a great time this weekend. And yeah, yeah. It just, no, the it's whole all love, man. Really you know? Great. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're like hugging each other after every show. And it's just like, yeah, it's nothing but love. So it, yeah. it was great. It was, it was really fun. That is really great. I love that so much. So I had a couple people that that had asked me, um, you know, I mentioned that I was going to be sitting down with you today. And I had a couple people that wanted me to bring up, you know, the fact that a member of your band, Lotus, had had something yeah. happen and then I didn't yeah. I didn't want to deter the conversation from being so high vibe and awesome from the from the weekend of course but I wanted to ask you how that kind of experience shaped you, you know your playing and kind of like how it you know you being a dad yourself and and having a wife and all of those things and you know just just kind of touch on that experience a little bit for yeah me. yeah you know I mean it was uh probably one of the more devastating things I've ever gone through. Um, and, you know, just uh, being that I know his family so well and know his wife and his daughter, um, and known them for 20 years, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's still tough. You know, sometimes I go and I, I look over and expect him to be there and he's not there, you know, so that's really hard. But, you know, we're really trying to do our best to honor him and, you uh, there were so many amazing things that happened also. Uh, for example, just like the way the whole music community like reached out and, you know, my phone didn't stop going off for like two weeks after and all the donations that came in for Jenny and the benefit shows and all the auctions and all that, you know, so it was, it was really moving with that. Um, and what I've done is that now um, I'm playing a lot of Chuck's percussion parts. So my drum set now is twice the size and I, but I have Chuck's gear, you know, so I have his bongos there and I have tambourines, Aww. you know, we, we just recently did this picture at, we have a festival that we do uh, every year called summer dance. And, yeah. you know, when, when it's time for the family picture, I had his tambourine in my hand, you know, to be in a picture. So yeah, it was, special. it was really cool. Yeah. So, oh, I got yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I so special. And it's really special that you have, parts of his equipment there with you like on so yeah, many levels yeah. that's just so special and like oh <laughs> like that's really yeah amazing. no no so it's it's uh you know it's a it's a it's a powerful it's a powerful thing and you know it also it just really makes you realize that you know any of us could check out anytime and you know we really have to try to have as much fun and kick as much ass while we're here <laughs> You never sure. know, you know, it's, and it's, you know, it's, we've, we've had a lot of uh, loss in the music community. This year, you know? So it's, uh, it's tough, but we just got to keep pushing through, you know? Keep pushing yeah. through for sure. For <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, man, this was, this is awesome. Like, and I was so jazzed all day too, to like, just to be able to talk to you because I was, I was all hyped up just from listening to the shows in my living room so i mean i can only imagine just yeah the, yeah the vibe that you are yeah hopefully we do another one on the east coast so you know more people uh you know some of my more friends can come and everything but uh yeah i know it, it was it was really great especially coming from you who's seen them so much over the years you know to say that it really it means a lot, you know, so i appreciate well, it well and it's funny too cuz i i had friends and i was like listen to this now and they're like oh Sarah said I should listen to this. Like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, guys. 
So you're going home. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's next yeah, for fact, you? I have what's, to catch what's... my flight in five minutes. <laughs> so um, we have, Lotus has off for a couple weeks. I have a side project um, this Friday. I'm playing with okay. everyone Orchestra in Philly, which is really fun. Fun. And then with Lotus, we're playing down at the uh, down in, in the caverns, at the, the, yeah. the underground cave. Yeah, um, yeah, I was there. I've seen them there. And then we're playing in Atlanta. Yeah, oh my God, it's cool. so awesome. We played, a lot of people consider one of Lotus's best shows ever was, was played there. Um, I think it was in 2019 or 18. Um, oh, cool. And so okay. to go back to that space, because it completely changes the way I play, because it there's so much reverb on the snare, you know, you just hit it once and there's like a three second tail. So, uh, you know, every, everything's different. So that, that's really fun. I'm looking forward to that. And then, you know, we're just getting into fall season here, you know, we got a uh, Bisco land coming up too, which is going to be a fun festival. So, uh, that's not far from me. Know. Maybe I'll come yeah. out. Maybe I'll come out. Yeah. That's not far from me all in New York. So yeah, that'd be cool. Cool. Yeah. You have to come and say hi. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have New Year's plans? Yeah, we are actually doing hometown show in Philly, uh, two okay. nights at Union Transfer. Nice. Um, so that that's yeah, that's always that's always cool. We haven't played in Philly for a little bit for New Year's, so uh, that'll be uh, that'll be really, really nice. So awesome. Very awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat during your layover. Sure, I'm, sure. I'm sure it was yeah, nice no to pass the time. <laughs> there you go. I had an hour to kill anyway. Here we are. So great. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Safe travels. And thank again, you. you killed it. So on behalf so of much. the Umphreys fans, thank you. You killed it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thanks so much. Talk soon. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.